That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Here's a preview. This town stinks of cattle. They say you get used to There's it. There's too many people and it ain't healthy. Could be. I suppose you intend to march right into this bullhead saloon. Could be. It won't be no worse than 100 to 1. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Lorne Green. In the spring of 1871, the Chisholm Trail was jammed with Texas cattle being driven north to the new Kansas railheads. The east was hungry for beef and willing to pay top dollar. Every Texan who could ride a horse was busy rounding up the vast herds of longhorns that had run wild across the state following the Civil War. Abilene, Kansas, opened the first railhead as soon as the Kansas Pacific tracks were down, thanks to the vision of an enterprising young man named Joseph McCoy. Virtually overnight, the town grew from a stage depot into a boom town. Cattle herds were backed up for miles, waiting shipment, as literally millions of dollars changed hands. And with the herds sold and delivered, the cowboys were paid off and turned loose on the town. The saloons and dance halls and bawdy houses were packed with Texans, gamblers, and drifters. And violence was inevitable. The violence that came with the cattle trade shocked Abilene's respectable citizens. A growing population of farmers and businessmen was determined to see an end to the railhead. They formed a Farmers Protective Association, and in the first meeting, they demanded action of the town's new mayor, Joseph McCoy, one of the men who had founded the cattle trade. This is a meeting, not a lynching. Now give the mayor a chance to speak. Uh, well, there'll be a few lynchings if something ain't done about these Texas cowboys. Yes, right. Right. Oh, we Joe McCoy faced those angry citizens knowing he was close to losing his shipping contract and everything he had struggled to build. He was desperate, but he had one last chance. If he could bring law and order to Abilene, he could still calm the growing opposition. Despite the fact that every marshal he had hired had either been run out of town or shot to death, he wasn't giving up. After sending inquiries all over the country, he found the sort of man he was looking for. A Civil War hero and an ex-army scout named James Butler Wild Bill Hickok. And that's how we begin our story, which, for the most part, actually happened. A new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of the Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Abilene, by Michael Angelella and James Knotts. Our star, John Daner. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. <laughs> his decision. He knew how to bring some semblance of order to Abilene. Now, he had to set his wishes in motion. All right, all right, all right, get settled here. Here, here, here. Let, let's hear what the mayor has to say. Thank you, Jake. I want to say right off that all of you have a good cause to be upset. Yes, sir, there's been too many drunken Texas boys firing pistols in the streets, too much fighting in the saloons, 
and too much general disturbance of the peace. Now, I, I came here to assure everyone that I intend to see law and order maintained in Abilene. Well, what about the bullhead and saloon? Yeah, what about that? Well, what about it, Joe? We had two shootings in that hell house this week alone. They got crooked faro gamers in the back room and anybody complains to get beat up or shot. That's right there. Yes, yes, sir. Right. Right. Now, now, I intend to see these saloons cleaned up, starting with the bull's head. <laughs> Mr. Philip Cole ain't gonna let nobody clean up the bull's head, and you know it. Yeah, well, you leave that to me. Yeah, you gonna arrest him, Mayor? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe oh, Deputy yeah. McDonald could run coal out of town. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, here comes your bookkeeper, Mr. Mayor. He's wearing a gun. Maybe he could help the deputy. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Well, well, what is it? What is it, Charlie? There's a stranger looking for you. He's trouble if ever I seen it. I brought a gun. What are you talking about? A tall fellow wearing a buckskin shirt. Looks like an army scout. Got hair down to his shoulders and the two-coat navy stuck what forward in his belt. I'd like to scare the stable boy out of his boots. Bring him here. Here, but I thought... I said bring him here. Look, no need to. That's him coming in the door. I don't like the looks of the fellow with him, either. Gentlemen, I am as concerned as you are about law and order. That's why I have hired a new marshal. Well, these Texans been running marshals out of town past the Hugh Hiram. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's yeah, the last yeah. We buried him. Yeah. Well, more lawmen ain't the answer. We gotta close down the railroad. Get, let them drive their herds to Newton or die. That's right. That's that's what you do need to The railhead made this town. Now, just look at the business it brings to Jake's store alone. Well, I could stand for a little less of that kind of business. Cost money to keep putting in new windows. And one of these drunk cowboys shot my dog last week. Whoa, sorry to hear that. We've got new farmers moving in every day. Farmers are year-round business, and I can do without the cattle trade. Only ones making money off the cattle trade are saloon owners like Coe. That's right. You yeah. don't forget the mayor here. He's got the shipping contract. Yeah. Yeah. The cattle trade that built this town. And it's the cattle trade that'll tear it down if we don't do something. That's right. I have done something. I've hired a new marshal. Yeah. Those boys will tar and feather him. <laughs> I don't think they'll tar and feather James Butler Hickok. Hickok. <laughs> well, Bill, heck, he couldn't get reelected sheriff of Hayes City. I heard he left town one step ahead of a lynch mob. <laughs> Cold spit him out like a melon seed. Yeah, that's right. sure, that's right. Well, you can say that to his face. He's standing by the door there. Uh oh, 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 oh. <laughs> But I, I, I didn't mean nothing. Uh, any comment, Bill? Ain't a mob or anything else ever run me out of town. As for being spit out. Uh, Mr. Hickok, uh, these men are just shooting off steam because of what's happening in this town. Uh, I think the mayor here deserves another chance. We'll find out soon enough if our new marshal can calm things down. Uh, anyone here against giving the mayor and his marshal a fair chance? Good. We're adjourned. So, Wild Bill Hickok was hired to tame Abilene. First off, he set about getting deputies in the only surroundings familiar and comfortable to him. Yeah, the 14 saloons in our little town, Bill. Uh, this one here, the Alamo, is the only one I care to drink in. Glass doors and brass fixtures. <laughs> Just like Kansas City. Yeah, yeah they even got a three-piece band that plays later on. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you could come, Bill. Oh, I'm sorry about that welcome. I'm used to it. This Sam Williams, an old friend of mine, thought I might need a deputy I could depend on. Oh, but I seen you need ten. Sam here keeps me looking on the bright side of things. Yeah, well, uh, there's one other deputy, J.P. McDonald. Any good? Well, afraid he tries to keep out of sight, but then someone has to sweep up and keep the paper working. Just what we need. 
Well, if it was easy, I wouldn't be making you two the highest paid lawmen in the country. Yeah, just what are you paying us? $150 a month to the marshal, $100 for his top deputy, 25% of all fines collected. Make that 50%. Ain't worth the bother for less. Well, uh, well, it's agreed. Yeah, there's... Oh, there's also two bits for every stray dog shot. I didn't come here to shoot no dog. Yeah, well, I, I don't want any shooting if it can be avoided, but... But at all costs, we must have law and order. Where do we start? Well, where the trouble is. The Bullshead Saloon. You bring that one under control and the others will follow. What's so special about the Bullshead? Oh, Bill, they... They run crooked pharaoh and poker games in a small back room. We've had several shootings, uh... A few dozen fights because of it. So I closed down the back room. Well, that would serve notice. Uh, there's only one problem. I figured. Yeah, well, uh, Bull's head is run by a Texan named Cole. Uh, first name Phil. And he won't like the idea of your closing down his back room. He's the one that's going to spit me out like a seed. What do you know about him, Mayor? Well, not much. They say he lost his family in the war. Let a detachment of Texas cavalry refused to surrender. He took a whole lot down to Mexico to fight for Maximilian. Seems he's partial to losing sides. He don't seem partial to surrendering. The mayor does have his problems. They call it progress. Well, you can have it. Huh? <laughs> you tired of city life already? I hear Custer signing on scouts to help chase the Cheyenne and Colorado. Now, if we left for Fort Hayes first thing... Forget it. This town stinks of cattle. They say you get used There's to it. There's too many people that ain't healthy. Could be. I suppose you intend to march right into this bullhead saloon. Could be. Well, it won't be no worse than a hundred to one. Don't forget our other deputy. Oh, yeah, that changes everything. We'll take shotguns. Oh, I should have known you had it all worked out. I only got one question. What's that? How'd you talk me into this? Good pay, good poker, and the best body houses this side of Kansas City. Oh, I knew there was a reason. It's good pay, Sam. Best I ever made. Were I Wild Bill, I'd be shooting bottles in a circus and making double a pay. <laughs> the hell you would. <laughs> and there's your uh, jail, Marshal. Ain't much, is it? <laughs> Locked. Anyone in there? Open up. Go away. <laughs> Locked out of your own jail. Open the door. <laughs> Get away from that door. Open up before I kick it in. You do, and I'll shoot. It's a shame to get shot breaking in your own jail. <laughs> I'm the new marshal. I don't trick that easily, partner. You, J.P. McDonald? What if I am? Name's Hickok. I just came from McCoy. So you're Wild Bill. Either the mayor's paying your fortune or you're a fool. Uh, no offense. Yeah, pull up a chair. Uh, this is Sam Williams. Oh? How do? Yeah. You got any shotguns? I got two Remington double barrels. What do you got in mind? I've been hearing so much about this fella, Cole. I thought it was time we got acquainted. Well, you ain't going in a bull's head carrying a shotgun. No, sir. Oh, thank heavens. I figured you and Sam would carry the shotguns. N nah. Uh, ho hold on. Uh, Unless you've got other ideas of employment. Our last marshal got himself killed trying to stand up to that bunch. And where were you at the time? Staying alive. Here's the shotguns. How about shells? In the drawer. <laughs> we 
we got enough ammunition here to blast the place to the ground. Y you don't... We'll never get past the door. The bull's head with shotguns. Coe's got guards. You got badges? It ain't safe to wear a badge on these streets. That's just asking to get shot at. There's a whole box full of badges in the drawer. This is crazy. You in or out? I've been a deputy here for two years. You can't just throw me out. I'll see McCoy. I'll tell In or out? In. <laughs> And so the three of them set out. J.P., Sam, and Wild Bill, walking down the main street in Abilene, right where everyone could see them wearing badges and carrying shotguns. Sounds like folks have a good time around here. We're just asking for trouble wearing these badges and carrying these shotguns. Just keep those barrels down. Yeah, it'd be a shame you blew that farmer out of his wagon, J.P. Weren't my idea. I ain't used one of these scatter guns in five years. You keep waving it around, and I'll take back the shells. Uh, Marshal Hickok. What we got here? That's Hank Wilson of the Abilene Chronicle. Hey, hey watch, watch out where you point that shotgun, J.P. Hey, hey uh... You mind if I ask you a few questions, Marshal? We got business. Oh, so I see. You're off to pull McCoy's fat out of the fire. Something like that. Well, it was a stroke of genius on the mayor's part hiring you. With all that's been written about you in the newspapers, you looked on as something right out of James Fenimore Cooper. What's he talking about? Beats me. You're an honest-to-God American hero, Mr. Hickok. Distinguished war service... Amazing exploits against the hostiles. Huh, you should have seen the show he put on in Flat Nose Case last winter. There's just one thing I don't understand. How is it you couldn't get re-elected sheriff of Hayes City last year? I didn't get enough votes. I heard it had something to do with your methods of law enforcement. You killed a number of men in Hayes. I ain't never shot a man that didn't ask for it. After you lost the election, you killed one soldier and seriously wounded another in a barroom brawl. I understand you left town one step ahead of a lynch mob. There was more to it than that. I hear General Sheridan posted a reward on you. That's a lie. You plan to use the same method of law enforcement here? I'll do what I was hired to do. In your case, I've heard it said there's a thin line between lawman and hired killer. I've had enough of your damn fool questions. We got business. So get... You can't order me around. You... Hey, you let go of my shirt. I got no time for you, Mr. Wilson. Now get out of my sight. You try that strong arm stuff with Mr. Coe and see what happens. I can remember when you loved nothing better than to throw the bull at newspaper men. Oh, Marshal, that just ain't no way to treat Hank Wilson. Come on, boys. We got business. That's the bull's head. Never thought I'd see the day I didn't care to visit a saloon. Watch those boys on the porch. Let's go. Hey, Slim! Do I see badges? Hey, looky, boys. <laughs> the town's hiring them another marshal and deputies. <laughs> Must not be paying much. Two of them can't afford a barber. <laughs> <laughs> they look like buffalo hunters and them buckskins. <laughs> well, we have to smell them to be sure. <laughs> Careful now. That's a two-gun marshal. <laughs> Watch yourselves. Now, where'd you think you was going, marshal? Get out of my way. Pin a badge on a man, and the first thing he does is to start giving orders. I ask you to get out of my way. You take your deputies and run along before we... <laughs> Don't touch the pistols, boy. Now, he only got thrown off the porch. The next man gets blowed off. You all right, Slim? Do I look all right? You ain't going to last long, Marshal. You got something in mind? No, not with them shotguns pointing up here. Oh, and here I thought you drovers were dumb as your steers. You go in that saloon. 
I'm going to enjoy watching you get carried out. Watch out, Marshal. There's a guard that sits inside the door. He's got a scatter gun of his own. I know one thing. Whatever we're making, it ain't enough. Come on. Just walk in. I'll here. take that shotgun. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> There's another scatter gun for you, JP. You in big trouble, mister. You're the one laying on the floor. Well, well, them badges don't mean nothing in here. We all know how to take care of law, man. You figure he'd talk that tough with a broken jaw, Sam? I'd be curious to find out. Get up. I ain't getting up. Ooh, looks like another smart one here. That's in the back room. Watch the door, J.P. If this one tries to get up, fill his pants with buckshot. I got him. Come on, Sam. Step aside. Step aside. Clear the doorway. Come on, clear the doorway. Come on, get out of there. Looks like one dead Texan there. Yes, sir. He's dead. Two balls through his shirt pocket. All right. Now, somebody... Somebody tell me what happened. This ain't any of your affair. That's right. That's right. I asked a question. Youngster here said I cheated. Got nasty about it. Pulled a pistol and I shot him. I suppose you got plenty of witnesses to say it was a fair fight. Everyone saw it. Couldn't be he was right about your cheating. You saying I cheat? I know, a slick gambler when I see one. It's in the eyes. What's in the eyes? Uh, a look akin to a weasel's. You know, you ain't always going to have a shotgun backing you up, Marshal. Won't make no difference to you. Why is that? Because you're on the noon train out of here tomorrow. What? You can't do that. Who do you think you are? Name is Hickok. Get out of my way. Now, what's going on in here? Come on in, Phil. Meet our new marshal. McCoy's hired Wild Bill Hickok this time. I don't allow shotguns in here, Hickok. You don't seem to object to shooting. He's trying to run me out of town, Phil. Ain't trying. I'm doing it. Now, hold on. My dealers don't start fights. If they do, they're through here. This one's through now. I don't care who you are. You don't come in here and run off my dealers. Dambler, if you're not on that train tomorrow, I'll come for you. You got my word on it. Do something, Phil. Hickok, any town that takes in a few thousand hard-drinking drovers is bound to have some trouble. It's the way things are. There's been trouble at the Alamo and the Silver Spur and all the others. Good dealers is hard to come by. And I don't intend to have mine run off without cause. From what I hear, you've had more than your share of trouble in this back room. Something to do with uh, fixed games, I'm told. Oh, oh, well, all right. You boys playing here. Any complaints? No. All right, speak up now. Anybody got a complaint about my game? No, oh, Phil Cole's a fair man. Sure, he's all right. The dealer goes. We've had other fancy lawmen through here. There was a Pinkerton man last year. He caught a train back east after two days. And then it was Bear River Tom Smith. <laughs> I was proud to know a man with his kind of guts. They had a real nice funeral for him. The dealer goes. You don't get the idea, do you, Hickok? I've got plenty of ideas. Another one is to close down this back room. It... What? I'm closing down your back room. That way, you won't be needing a new dealer. Ain't it amazing how things work themselves out? You ain't got the right. Sam here is holding all the right I need. Now, everybody out of here. What? Oh. This room is closed oh, down. Dad, who do you think I won't stand for this. You'll stand for it or you'll join your dealer on that train tomorrow. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. I reckon we will. Let's get out of here, Sam. You look a bit peaked, J.P. Oh, I should have known better than get mixed up in this. Go on, let it be. You were good in there, J.P. I was? You were fine. Huh, I guess I was at that. J.P.'s right about Coe, though. We got him backed into a corner, and he don't strike me as the sort that runs from trouble. We'll find out soon enough. 
What would you do if you was co Bill? I suppose I'd run me out of town. Well, there's one thing I noticed about Co. What's that? He reminds me a lot of you. All right, boys. All right, boys. Now, it looks to me like we got a problem. Well, we've handled lawmen before. You handled them real well at the door, Red. And now Hickok was on me before I knowed what happened. I pay you to stay awake. Well, I, I, I didn't have me a chance, Bill. Now, maybe you'd be more comfortable at the door with a rocking chair and a pillow. Oh, well, now, it won't happen again. If that wasn't enough, Frank here has to go and shoot a drover. He pulled a gun on me. Because you got careless. What do I have to do to get through to you dealers? I want the game dealt straight unless I say otherwise. We can't afford that kind of trouble. He was drunk. I didn't think he'd draw on me. I'm surrounded by idiots. That kind of trouble costs me money. And the next dealer to get into a gunfight is through working for me. Now, here's what we do. Drinks on the house tonight. We'll get these boys fired up with green whiskey, and then I'll talk to them. Won't take much to get them riled up enough to run the marshal right out of Abilene. Yeah, not with you leading them, Phil. If we can get enough of a mob after him, I think Hickok will run. They chased him out of Hayes City, I'm told. No reason why we can't do the same here. These are good southern boys, and they got a natural dislike for Yankee marshals. What if he don't run? I'll do what has to be done. Lorne Green again, and here's the concluding act of Abilene. That makes 2,000 head. We're running short of cattle cars. Well, I told those blackheads at the Kansas Pacific that we'd run short of cars by mid-season. Well, what are we going to do? That pack and firm in St. Louis expect to ship them to go out tomorrow. Yeah, well, it's sending flat cars in the morning. Flat cars? What good are flat cars? Hire a crew to build sightings. Now get it done first thing. Flat cars? I never... We got herds backed up to Mud Creek. We got to move them. Oh, uh, Mayor, here comes Jake Burroughs, and he don't look pleased. What's Wilson doing with him? Afternoon, Joe. Oh, Jake, Hank. Hey, you, heard, you heard about the shooting? Sure. What shooting? Well, there's been another killing at the Bull's Head. That's right, Mayor, and that ain't the worst of it. There's more? You bet there's more. All right, now settle down, Hank. What is it? Well, he's got a right to be riled. Your marshal roughed him up this afternoon. Why? That ain't important. Well, I don't take to being shoved around by the man that's supposed to represent the law in this town. I don't know what your marshal did at the bull's head, but he stared up a mob. There's talk of running him out of town tonight. Oh, my God. Well, there's the chance you asked for. I, I, I don't understand how this could happen. It's the cattle trade, like always. And your new marshal is making things worse. We're calling the association together tonight at the church. I think we'll have enough boats to end the railhead. Oh, now, now, hold on. I'll have a special edition of the Chronicle out by tomorrow in support of them. You haven't got the votes. Yes, well, we'll see how many votes they get after my paper comes out. All right, all right, but at least give me a chance to look into this, huh? I'll, I'll fire Hickok if need be. You've used up your chances, McCoy. Much of a crowd, Bill. Yeah, I noticed. Here comes J.P. He looks as happy as a whipped dog. There's a mob brewing at the bull's head. Well, I do believe he's shaking. You better try some of this rye, son. Thanks. We got big trouble. Coe's giving out free drinks to fire the boys up. Huh. No wonder this place is empty. You don't suppose Coe'd let us in? This is serious. He means to see you run out tonight. So that's how it is, huh? Ain't anyone running me out. Just don't see no point to it. It's a matter of pride, J.P. Ain't nobody gonna run him out of another town. Ah, uh, shut up and drink your rye. J.P., you get to the window and keep an eye on the street. Oh, I don't like it. You see anything out there? It's too dark to see much. Now, wait a minute. Here comes McCoy, running like someone set fire to his breeches. Maybe he wants to give us a raise. 
Hey, Doc. Hey, Doc. You're fired. I'm what? Fired. You've only been here a few hours. How could you cause so much trouble? Good Lord, man, another shooting? There's nothing I could do about it. Yeah, and you got a mob threatening to tear this town apart. You're the one who asked for law and order. I didn't ask for a war. As I recall, you said to do whatever it took. At all costs. Well, the association is meeting tonight. You've even got the Chronicle swung over to their side. Hickok, uh, we can't afford any more trouble. There's something going on at the Bull's Head. The porch cleared off real sudden. Everyone went inside. More free drinks. you got to get out of town. You dealt this hand, Mayor. I'll be seeing it out. Talk some sense into him, Sam. Time for talking is past. But the two of you can't stand up to a mob alone. Don't forget J.P. over there. Oh, there's got to be a way to stop this. Oh, maybe, yeah. Uh, yeah, the farmers. What's that? The farmers are meeting at the church. Well, I don't see what farmers got to do with it. Well, they might help. These Texans won't start trouble if the town backs you up. Even Phil Cole won't stand up to that. What's on your mind? Sam, Sam, get over to the church. Talk to Jake Burris. Tell him we need all the good men he can get. Why don't you go? I'm not letting the marshal out of my sight after what's happened so far. Then what about J.P.? Oh, they wouldn't listen to J.P. <sighs> what do you think, Bill? He's the mayor. All right. I hope you know what you're doing, mayor. So do I. I'll be back as quick as I can. You watch yourself, Bill. All right, listen here. Listen here. You all know we got a new marshal today. And a Yankee marshal at that. He's trying to run Frank out of town. All Frank did was defend himself in a fair fight. Most of you seen him rough up Red at the door, and Red was just doing his job. Hickox got it in for Southern boys, and he'll run this town like he pleases if we don't put a stop to it. Now, now, I got, I got no quarrel with the law, but I don't intend to let a man make up his own. You with me? Yes! I, I'm heading for the Alamo to run this blue belly out of Abilene. This here's a closed meeting, Deputy, and we don't allow no shotguns in this church. I've got to see Jake Burroughs. Uh, 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 Jake? Jake Burroughs? Deputy here wants to see you. What is it, Sam? i got to talk to you. We need some help. What's that? It's a mob. The Texans. They're after the marshal, ain't they? And i got to get back. Yeah. Well, cut through the alley by Henderson's store. It's quicker. <laughs> Follow me out, J.P. What? I ain't going out there. Follow me out and move down the fort. No, no. I just want him to see that shot. I'm not firing into that crowd no matter what. They'd hang me. I said to follow me. All right. But I ain't firing. Where's Sam? Let's go. Well, here he is, boy. You looking for me, Cole? We come to see you out of town, Marshal. That'll be the day. Well, you can ride out or get carried out. Don't make no difference to me. And carry me out, you got... Watch out, Hickox! Hickox shot Cole. He, he's... He's killed me, Red. Phil. Phil. Hold it there! Hold it still, all of you! Next man touches a gun, gets a load of buckshot. Now, just hold it. There's a man coming out of the alley, Bill. Watch it. He's got a shotgun. You got him. I'll get his scattered gun. Who was that? Oh, my God. Bill, it's Sam. Sam. Oh, hell. <laughs> Sam. Sam, it was dark. Don't... Don't you ever miss. <laughs> Sam. Sam. He's killed his own deputy. Oh, All right, break it up. Get on out of here before I use this. It's all over now. They'll close down the railhead. Shut up, Mayor. Well, 
He's killed Sam. Oh, close down the railhead. Come on! Get off the street! Come on! Uh, what? What? Move up. What are you all looking at? Come on! Get! You gotta stop it. Not on your life. What's he doing? Yeah, well, looks like he's got business with the bull's head. Over there. Yep, there he goes. He's crazy. Oh, it's all over. Just getting my things together. That, uh, your pack horse out there? It is. You believe in that? Yeah. Ain't the best morning to be traveling, what with the storm. I got a good slicker. Bill, I, uh, I know how you must feel. Shut up. JP. You take care, Bill. You keep this door locked. Here. Um, be seeing you, JP. That was the end of the railhead in Abilene, the only town in Kansas to forsake the riches of the cattle trade to become a quiet farming community. Joe McCoy, with his chance at a fortune gone, he moved on and took a job counting cattle for the United States Census Bureau in Wichita. And what of Wild Bill? Well, his legend was secure. His exploits as an army scout during the Civil War and the Indian campaigns have not tarnished with time. He had served as a lawman in some of the most savage towns of the frontier. Yet, isn't it ironic that the very characteristics for which he was needed, his skill with the revolver and his courage in the face of danger, were the very ones that in the end led to his banishment from civilized towns. Some say... Wild Bill's spirit died that day in Abilene. He would create no more legends. He was shot in the back in the squalor of a ramshackle saloon in Deadwood, South Dakota, in the summer of 1876. Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Abilene was written by Michael Angelella and James Knotts, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Lorne Green. Our star was John Daner. Also heard were Eddie Firestone. Tom Brown, Howard Culver, Norman Alden, Parley Bear, Jack Carroll, Barney Phillips, and Lynn Berman. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. <laughs>